Texas moves to 7-2 and two overall, but more importantly, 6-0 and oh in Big 12 play after a 47-40 overtime win in Morgantown over West Virginia. Dave Bear here at the Statesman Newsroom, and as we've done all year long for these big away games, we have columnist Kirk Bowles on the line. And Kirk, let's just start things off right away with your immediate reactions from the win. Well, it was interesting. It was exciting. I think you got to start there. I mean, you talk about some compelling action. I mean, back and forth. I think the lead changed six times and before it tied at the end. And Mac Brown wins his first overtime uh, as Longhorn head coach. Uh, it was more than any fan could dream. Uh, I think it probably added some years to the coaches' lives. But uh, it was definitely compelling action, Dave. And Kirk, what are you going to say? Another game, another chapter in the Case McCoy legend here at UT. I don't think uh, scoring 49 passes for Case was in the game plan originally, but I also didn't think they figured they'd have this much difficulty running the ball as they did. And yeah, it was kind of Case McCoy to the rescue once again. We've seen that act before. and. You know, he ends up with three touchdown passes. I mean, he throws some of the ugliest passes you ever want to see. And, you know, turn around and throw a beautiful touchdown to Mike Davis on a fly route and another great pass to Jackson Shipley on a flag route, a fade route in the end zone for a touchdown to, to keep him close. So, you, know, you got to take your hat off to Case McCoy because, you know, he keeps coming back for more and, and he's throwing the deep ball, you know, probably better than he does a lot of the short routes. Case came up big in the second half, but in the first half, really not the case, Kirk. Uh, Texas forced three turnovers, a couple in prime position to put up points, but Texas really only able to get field goals early. It kind of kept West Virginia in the ball game. Yeah, and, and for a while, Dave, it looked like that might make the difference because, you know, twice, as you alluded to, uh, they got the ball after fumbles at the West Virginia 7. I think uh, the first time they did that, they ended up losing a yard on three plays before kicking a, a field goal. And the next one, they lost four yards uh, before kicking a field goal and not being able to turn over to the touchdown. It looked like it might, might come back to haunt them. But uh, the defense really kind of hung in there. I give them a lot of credit. You know, losing Chris Whaley to uh, the knee injury there in the, in the very early going. I think they had about five or six of their sacks and three fumbles in the first half alone and, and still trailed. So that's kind of how strange uh, the game was. So, Kirk, what do you think? Is this a good win because they were able to gut one out on the road in hostile territory, or, or is it a bad win because it's kind of a trend in that they play sloppy and somehow some way wind up on top at the end of the day? I think the Texas team kind of thrives on adversity like this, Dave. I think they believe in themselves so much that they're going to find a way to get it done. Uh, I think they'd be surprised by anything, but they weren't flat tonight, but they just kind of... Uh, heroic effort from West Virginia. You know, it just seems like nothing faces this Texas team. Uh, they just cool and calm, and they don't seem to sweat. And uh, it almost seemed like they'd have it no other way. As you know, they're going down the stretch with Oklahoma State coming to Austin next week, and then uh, you got Texas Tech and Baylor. So, you know, I, I tell you what, I don't know how many cynics are left because they're sure making them believers out of a lot of us. Uh, the way they're playing week in, week out. Well, Kirk, that leads me to my final question. You witnessed the game tonight. Do you think this team has what it takes to run the table to win these last three games and win the Big 12? I tell you, Dave, I'd be hesitant to write them off. I mean, I, I'm a big believer in karma and destiny and with everything that's you know, being thrown at the Longhorns, with you know, starting out one and two, you know, uh, you know, giving up so many rushing yards and having injuries to you know, quarterback and David Ash, and linebacker Jordan Hicks, and now Whaley and Jonathan Gray. You, you, you keep thinking it's going to catch up with them. I don't know. I'm not going to be the one to tell Texas they can't do it because they're sure writing a really, really Cinderella story. And you know, it's kind of fun, fun chronicling it as we go down to the wire. All right, Kirk, travel safe. Okay, Dave. Bye bye. And that'll also do it for us here at the Statesman. We'll see you.